So we're going to get started. So thank you everyone for coming out on this rather cold morning. I was told that this is the coldest it's been in DC in four years. So we appreciate everyone's passion and enthusiasm. Um, for being here, and hopefully that will keep us warm. My name is Deepali Patel, and I am the director of the Forum on Global Violence Prevention, which is here at the Institute of Medicine, um, which is also part of the National Academy of Sciences, and that is the building in which you are in. Um, our Forum on Global Violence Prevention is an ongoing convening activity here that explores these multi-sectoral and multidisciplinary approaches to violence prevention. Um, both in the U.S. and around the world, because as we all know here, violence is a borderless problem. Um, and there are many solutions, much of which have evidence around them, and that's part of what we will be exploring today. Um, I just want to thank everyone for being here, for being in attendance this morning, our speakers as well, for making the effort to come out here. Um, we have viewers on a webcast as well. so. Um, not just in the U.S., but around the world. So thank you to everyone on the webcast. Um, we will be um, putting the videos of the webcast on our website after this workshop as well. So for those of you, for, for, for those of you who are in a time zone that doesn't work for watching this, you will be hearing this later. Um, and uh, for those of you who tweet, whether you're on the webcast or in this room, I will note that we have a hashtag um, it's, it's hashtag prevent violence. So please feel free to tweet whatever you're seeing happening here, whatever you'd like to talk about. Please use that hashtag. That's just a way for us to be able to track what people are saying. And if you're on the webcast, you'll see that you can actually see that feed so you can see the conversation. If, you have, if you're watching on the webcast and you have any questions, you can also you know, use that hashtag and send the questions along. And if we get a chance, we'll try and approach those questions as well. Um, and on behalf of the forum, um, I also would just like to welcome everybody here and thank you. And then I personally, and also probably on behalf of the IOM, would like to thank our forum members um, for making it out here. For all of the sponsors of our forum, we have um, several sponsors across academia, uh, sorry, across the government, private sector, and foundations as well. And it is that sponsorship that allows us to continue to do this work that we're doing. Um, we have been in operation now for two and a half years, which is an incredibly short amount of time, but um, it's been very productive and rewarding here. So just a couple more comments. I would just like to point out that everything you hear today is the opinion or perspective of the individual speaker that is saying it. Um, nobody here is speaking on behalf of the IOM or any sort of consensus process. Um, and they may or may not be speaking even on behalf of their institution. So thank you all again for attending. Um, just turn it over now to Jim Mercy, who is the co-chair of the planning committee that planned this workshop. He's also a member of the Forum on Global Violence Prevention, and he is from CDC. Thank you. Thanks to Polly. Good morning, everybody. It's, it's great to be here in this warm, cozy room with old friends and colleagues, as well as new friends and colleagues. Um, I want to uh, start by acknowledging the planning committee for this workshop. Um, if the planning committee could stand. Uh, Katrina Baum from the National Institutes of Justice is the co-chair of this planning committee. Um, Jacqueline Lloyd over here from the National Institute on Drug Abuse at the National Institute of Health is a member of the planning committee as well. Um, Anthony Petrosino, right here, is uh, the senior research associate at WestEd. And uh, Mark Rosenberg, over here, is the uh, co-director of the, the Johns Hopkins Center for, I'm sorry, <laughs> the executive director, <laughs> the executive director at the Task Force for Global Health. And he's also the co-chair of the IOM's Global Forum on Violence Prevention. And then, last but not least, is Daniel Webster, who is the co-director of the John Hopkins Center for Gun Policy as well as, uh, and Research, as well as the Associate Director 
at the Center for, for the Prevention of Youth Violence at Johns Hopkins. Thank you so much to the committee for all your hard work. Of course, our work wouldn't have been possible without the support of the um, IOM staff. And uh, I also want to acknowledge to Polly Patel, who you just heard from, as well as Rachel Taylor, Megan Perez, Kathy Blakesley, and of course, uh, Patrick Kelly, who have supported us immensely in putting this workshop together. So just a round of applause for all of them. Thank you. I came across this quote that I thought was really great the other day. It's actually a quote from a man named Alan Ray that is the, um, was the, sort of a mantra for the, the computer revolution. He said, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And it occurred to me that for the past 30 years, the field of violence prevention has been inventing a future without violence. Um, and incredible progress has been made. I think it's really remarkable when you think that as short a time ago, at least as short a time ago in some of our lives, as 35 years ago, the words violence and prevention weren't, were rarely used in the same sentence. So we've made a lot of progress. But I think we're at an important crossroads. The demand for knowledge about how to effectively prevent violence has escalated dramatically in recent years, even recent weeks. Of course, President Obama has called for greater investments. Um, many countries around the world um, recognize the value of investing in violence prevention now. Indeed, I mean, you'll hear later about um, this morning about large-scale domestic and global initiatives whose success hinges on successful, being successful at preventing violence. So how do we meet the demand both in the U.S. and around the world for effective violence prevention? That's really the question that this workshop is about, ultimately. I think this workshop uh, provides an opportunity for us to assess what we know and don't know about violence prevention, um, how we better integrate the knowledge that we do have, what we, how we can better apply and implement what we do know about prevention, both in the U.S. and around the world. We used, um, in our planning, we used a paradigm of knowledge management that was proposed by John Seely Brown as a framework, framework for the workshop. You'll see this clearly laid out in the agenda if you look closely at it. And this framework has four stages. The first stage is knowledge generation, second, knowledge integration, third, knowledge dissemination, and knowledge application. On the first day, we'll be focusing primarily on, uh, on knowledge generation and knowledge integration. Um, and on the second day, tomorrow, we'll focus primarily on knowledge dissemination and application. Now, a word that's used quite frequently in the context of the forum is evidence. And I think a primary focus of this forum is on scientific evidence, but certainly knowledge is not limited to scientific evidence. I think also in the forum we have a lot of knowledge among the participants who are both speakers as well as in the audience that's based on experience, their experience in working on the, at the ground level in preventing violence, in doing research on violence prevention and in thinking about how best to apply and implement it. So we can draw on these next two days both on what we know about the scientific evidence as well as the experience that's represented around this room. So please join us in continuing to invent a future without violence. And thank you for being here. Um, this morning, um, one of the uh, lead stories on the New York Times was about rape in India. And, and of course, rape and sexual violence are a problem throughout the world. But I think we are fortunate this morning to have a video message from Michelle Bachelet. Um, Ms. Bachelet is the first Under Secretary General and Executive Director of UN Women, which was just established in 2010 by the United States United Nations General Assembly. Um, Mrs. Ms. Bachelet served as the president of Chile from 2006 to 2010. 
and has been a longtime champion of human rights. Um, she also served as the Minister of Defense and Minister of Health in Chile during her tenure there. So I think she speaks quite elo eloquently and forcefully about the importance of violence against women um, at a time when um, it's, it's very much needed. 